As a music composer, especially one that writes classical concert music, most people think that I just write music all day, existing on a different plane than normal everyday people. Now, while my job as a composer is definitely quite unusual, my job as a teacher is not. So today I'll be taking you along with me on my busiest day of the week, which involves teaching private lessons and group classes to my nearly 80 students across two universities in New Jersey and New York. So here we are, I'm downstairs in my home in New Jersey. It's 5.33 a.m., oh gosh. And it's time to get my pups out. The little one's name is Ivy, and the bigger one is Kala. And believe it or not, the little one is the one with the big temper, but we love her all the same. Now, as I'm getting to start my day, I make sure to get caught up on my emails, mainly from the many students I'll be seeing later that day. I'm definitely more of an early riser. I can't stand working at night. Eight o'clock, day begins. Off to my first university gig. Now I know I shouldn't be filming while driving, but if you look real close to the left, you'll see the New York City skyline, which never gets old. All right, it's 8.45. Just arrived at New Jersey City University, and we're gonna get started with our first couple lessons of the day to these two really talented composition students. And then we're gonna do my arranging class right after that. And by the way, if you do want to study with me at New Jersey City University and you're in the area, do send in an application. I am reviewing them as the next few months go by. They are on a rolling basis. More information in the link in the description below as I'm going up these stairs to the university. Student Union Building. Right here is our music building, Rossi Hall, right outside the Union Building. All right, so we're gonna start with our first four hours of teaching today, and then head off to Columbia right after that. So my Thursdays pretty much start like this, with me here in the practice room, waiting for my two graduate students to come in. They'll come in one at a time from nine to 10, and the other one comes in from 10 to 11. Then right after that, I do my instrumental and vocal arranging class to 20 undergraduate students from around 11 o'clock to 12.30. Then I'll jump on the bus all the way to Manhattan where I teach at Columbia University from around 2.30 till 5.30. So it's a lot of teaching, and I only do this on Thursday. I do teach on some of the other days, but it's not as drastic as today. <laughs> it's a lot, but I love doing it. So typically speaking, what happens in a lesson, in case you're wondering, is that I have basically a Google Doc that I have for all my students where I can keep track of exactly what we did over the last several weeks or months. For my private students online, I do this as well, just like I do for my in-person students here at the university. For me, this is crucial because I want to make sure that I can track all my students' progress over time, not just week to week, but also checking what were they doing a couple of months ago? Was there anything that we promised that we would do two months down the line? Are there any deadlines that we set for ourselves? And that way we can keep both of ourselves accountable during the lessons. Now, lessons are not just about learning music theory or orchestration or any of those things, though they are part of it. They're also part of the learning journey about how to think like a composer. What are some of the things that we should keep an eye out as we're writing new pieces of music? How do we rehearse with other musicians? What are some tactics for how to get performances? If you can tell that a student is having a bad day, know when to ease off on that student. And conversely, if you know that a student is just being lazy, know how to get on that student to say, hey, you need to do what you're doing here. Otherwise, you're wasting both of our times. So there is a push and pull with week to week lessons that you don't get as much from learning from a class environment. And I'm usually not this formal during lessons. I'm just wearing this suit today because late this evening, I'm going to a gala and I don't have any time to change this entire day. And the gala starts at around six o'clock. So right after I finish from Columbia, I got to go head down to Lincoln Center and go to the gala. So basically, I really am Dr. Haddad, Professor Haddad, whatever you want to call it today with this whole suit and tie nonsense. Now, when I was a student myself, I remember having lessons specifically with Bruce Broughton. And I remember every single lesson, it was almost like a therapy session, I would say. I was a senior at USC. I didn't really know what I was gonna do next. Talking with Bruce every single week was such a calming presence. Just hearing from him every week 
week just soothed me. So I remembered that tenet from Bruce that the lessons are not only about music, they're also about making sure that the student feels comfortable and giving the student some inspiration as he goes or she goes forth that week or that two weeks before I see them again. It's also really important as a teacher to not spoon feed the student. You don't wanna be telling the student every single thing that he or she needs to do with their piece. Sometimes what I do is suggest a piece they should listen to. And in that process of listening to that specific piece, they realize, oh, that's what Saad was talking about. That specific thing, that specific transition, that specific orchestration, that's what I should be doing in my piece. And that way you retain it much better when you're learning in that fashion. Now, one thing I didn't realize when I was starting my composing journey was how often I would be teaching or how much teaching is expected for my job as a composer. In the past, I used to think this was a waste of time. Like, why would I wanna be a teacher when I could just be composing all day? But in reality, me teaching all this time has actually helped me a lot with my own composing efforts. And it's given me a lot of motivation when I sit down and compose my own music. I've been exposed to other things. I've been exposed to students instead of just being a hermit in my studio, down in my basement, or wherever I've been in my past 10 years or so. And not to mention, teaching relieves the pressure off of your composing. If there are a couple months where you don't have the commission or you just don't feel like composing a particular piece in that quarter, teaching helps alleviate that because at least you are doing something inherently musical during that time that you're not composing or that you're taking a break and you're using that time to re-energize before you start your next piece. Composing every single day, like as if it's a factory, is really tough on your mental health and actually doesn't really produce much original music. At least that's what I've found. All right, this is Victor, one of my grad students. Say hi. How are you doing? Where are you from, Victor? I'm from Peru. Peru? And this is your last semester here, right? Yeah, this is my last semester. What do you have to do for your last semester here at NJCU? I am uh, going to present a recital with my compositions and present a, well, a paper that I'm working with my professor. And yeah, that, that, that's all. That yeah, so they have to do, you have to do a paper, 20-page paper, mm -hmm. and then you have to do a final recital that yeah. you have to produce. Yeah. So there's a lot of skills you you have to know you have to be able to write yeah. you have to be able to compose the music of course mm -hmm. and then you have to actually get all the musicians together to play at the recital so mm -hmm. your recital is happening when may 9 may 9 may 9 yeah. and i'll be there yeah. <laughs> of course <laughs> all right we're going to start the lesson so victor here is working on a piece for solo acoustic guitar he had powered through a week of writing non-stop so that he can deliver the score to a guitar player he knows overseas for composers, especially those that don't play guitar, the instrument can be a very unwieldy force to deal with. However, I have to say Victor handled its many idiomatic quirks with grace, and I think it's gonna sound really terrific once the guitar player starts rehearsing it. All right, so by now I'm finished both private lessons and heading now into my next class entitled Instrumental and Vocal Arranging. This is an introductory class where we spend a few weeks at a time on various instrumental families of the orchestra, learning the basics of how they work and what goes into arranging original works for other ensembles like choir, string quartet, wind quintet, and brass quintet. And now that we're all done, I run off to the transit system for my nearly two hour commute to Manhattan. This happens to be the only time I have to eat, so bon appetit. Now this is quite an active commute, a lot of getting off at one stop, going outside, heading to another subway, which keeps me pretty alert throughout the day. Finally, it's about 2.20 p.m. and I've arrived at Columbia University where I serve as a professor of two back-to-back -back sections of a class called Music Humanities. This is a really fun class where non-music majors at Columbia learn about Western music, starting from the medieval period all the way up to the present day. It's quite fast-paced and since we don't expect anyone in the class to read music notation, most of the discussions in the class are centered around what I call the three pillars of the course individualism, genre, and patronage.
In today's class, we had a jazz band come in to perform various standards for the students, and they did a great job answering all the very insightful questions my students had across my two sections. The jazz class is definitely one of the highlights of the course, and it's great that Columbia provides that once a semester for the students. Once class was over at 5.30 p.m., I headed down 60 blocks to jazz at Lincoln Center, where I'm attending a fundraiser for a New York-based music arts organization. Now normally I don't sit in the front row, but this is where I happen to have my assigned seat for the evening. It was great to hear so much live music performed so exceptionally just a few feet away from me. This is the kind of experience that I always encourage my students to pursue with their own music. There is nothing like hearing it live in a concert hall or studio setting. However, I have to say the highlight of the evening was getting to hang out with my composer friend and fellow Columbia grad, Katie Balch, who just recently began teaching composition over at a little place up north called the Yale School of Music. This month, her new orchestral work is getting premiered by the New York Philharmonic, which is incredibly exciting, and I'm so proud to know folks like her that are achieving great things. All right, now it's nearly 10 p.m. It's time to head back to New Jersey. I'm pretty tired at this point, but feeling fortunate all the same that I get to do this for a living. Right now it's 10.30 p.m. and we're back where we started. We just got the bus back from Manhattan. And now I'm back in New Jersey. I uh, taught here this morning, of course. And what I usually do on Thursdays is I put my car in the parking lot for the entire day and I have it charging so that I can actually have a full charge when I get back. So thank you guys so much for being part of this little journey here. Thursdays is my longest day. I don't have days like this every single day, but it's a lot of fun. I wouldn't do it every single day though, that's for sure. All right, night night guys, take care.